Bonjour everyone, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV here for lineup predictions. Leicester City, Leeds United, I've just seen Leicester on the screen, sorry, the lineup, the uh, watch along uh, visuals are still on for the Leicester, that must have been the last one that we're done. So it's not Leicester anymore now, it's Leeds United on Saturday, three o'clock kickoff at Ellen Road, not on any primetime television, no Sky Sports, no BT. And no watch along at the Magpie channel either. Otherwise, I would have already had them visuals updated. Um, before we get started, look into the top corner and on the bottom of your screen. What does that say? Who knows wins the new app that sponsors the Magpie channel? A little bit similar to Soccer Six, bit of an accumulator, pot prize entry, put a fee in of a fiver, entry fee five pound, and you get ten games to predict on. Don't need to put the Actual scores, unlike Super 6, they just generate the 10 games. You put your 10 games on, and there will be a winner. Like I say, unlike Super 6, someone will win. I don't know if you can see the top of that there, but the winner will get three grand from the prize fund. Second place gets 250, third place gets 28 pound, and anywhere from fourth to 100th place gets a tenner. So double your money, even if you come in a hundredth. This ain't no short race. It's a long one, you know what I mean? So 10 games, I'm putting mine on right now. I've got Bournemouth to beat Hull, Wolves to beat Brentford, going to draw Leeds Newcastle. Spoiler alert, getting my score prediction in nice and early there. West Ham to beat Man United at Old Trafford. What do you think about that one? Playing a risky one, that one, is it? Uh, Huddersfield away to Redden. Sheffield United at home to Luton. Fulham away to Stoke. I'm putting a draw on Swansea and Preston. Man City to beat Southampton. And a draw in the Atletico Valencia game. Confirming my entry right now. And there we are. Congratulations. There we are. That's mine submitted. Pick 10. Get involved. Up that prize and come get some winnings if you can. Link is in the description below. Thank you very much. And there we are. So back to the game tomorrow. That's the production stuff done. Um, yeah, Leeds at home uh, for them. We are away. Um, what is going on? Bit of an up and down season for Leeds, really. Obviously, a team that's been very, very good since pr getting promoted to the Premier League. Yeah, before last, had a great uh, first season last year. Big fan of Leeds. I think they've done very, very well uh, with Bielsa getting up and to, back into the Premier League after a 16-year absence. But this season hasn't really gone their way, really, has it? They're currently in um, 15th in the Premier League, only four places better off than what we are. A uh, good few points out of the relegation zone, though, so you wouldn't have thought they could, they'd be in relegation contention, but it could happen. There's a long way now. We're only halfway through the season, so a lot of time to cover, a lot of ground and stuff. So uh, they've got 22 points which is 10 better than our 12. So, yeah, 10 points ahead of us, four places higher. Hasn't been the greatest of seasons for them. Uh, they have won the last two games, so they're coming into this game trying to get three on the bounce after a bit of a poor run in. They, they had a bit of a tough run in, to be fair, before then. Um, Arsenal, City and Chelsea, the lost two quite heavily as well. 4-1 Arsenal, 7-0 City and 3-2 Chelsea. That's an aggregate scoreline of 14-3 in three games. But they have bounced back from that in beating Burnley at home 3-1 and West Ham 3-2 on the road. So six goals in the last two games, finding a bit of form now. Uh, got quite a few out, though. Um, Tyler Roberts and Joel Geldhart have uh, returned from injury, so they're back training now. But they are without Adam Forshaw, Junior Firpo, Patrick Bamford, Liam Cooper, Calvin Phillips, Jamie Shackleton, Charlie Cresswell, and Sam Greenwood. So the key names there for me are Brent, uh, are Bamford and Calvin Phillips, uh, two people that's been called up to the England squad quite recently. Bamford, not many appearances, but Calvin Phillips is stalwart in the middle of the midfield for England. So good news that he's out. Taylor Roberts can find a net. Uh, Liam Cooper is... Is he still that captain? He used to be a bit of a, a solid British centre-back. So, And Junior Firpo as well. He was a sign that they made at centre-back. So a bit of a change-up that Leeds are going to have to adapt to. Um, 
Looking at our record for the past few fixtures, though, um, we lost at Ellen Road last season in their bounce back season in the Premier League 5 2. We got done in that game. Early goal from Jeffrey and Kieran Clark. Looking Jeff Hendrick and Kieran Clark on the score sheet. Who would have thought that? But we did concede five, got absolutely battered. So, nay good that. And we also lost to them at home as well. So, they did do the double over us last season. Uh, 2 1 win at St James's Park. We have played them this so far this season, though, in September. We drew 1 1. Alan Samaxman, I think he put us ahead, didn't he? I think he put us 1 0 ahead. Good game, though, to be fair. A bit of a tough fixture, but it, it's Leeds. They are a bit of a tough team. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a bit of a, a scrappy one, I think. I think it's going to be a bit of a, a funny game. Um, having a look. At the comments, just to make sure that we're all here. Hello, John. Good to see you, mate. Aaron, hello. We've got a 3-1 Leeds prediction. 1-0 Newcastle. Paul Dummett is our best centre-back. That's a strong opinion, that, Aaron. That is a strong opinion. Hello, Callum. Good to see you, mate. Wood's going to bang a bullet header. Final 10 minutes. 1-0 to be brilliant. Ex-Leeds player. had a, I think he was... Player of the Year in the Championship a few years ago. can't remember how, how long ago it was, but he was banging the men. Sure, he was top scorer and Player of the Year playing for Leeds. He's already played at Ellenwood, uh, Ellen Road recently. <laughs> Wood, I'm, I'm getting confused, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Chris Wood has played at Ellen Road recently. That was one of his final games for Burnley. Uh, so he's going back there. Paul Dummett is gash. I'm more with you there, Frank. I'm more with you than what Aaron said. Absolutely. Um, what up, Greg? Rafinha's their biggest threat. Yeah, I agree with that. Be interesting with Chris Wood, who's coming up against his old club. Yep. Um, so with that in said, let's see how else we're done. Let's say they've had a 16-year absence from the Premier League. Um, before that, um, so Ellen Road, when was our last win in the Premier League at Ellen Road? It was in the 2002-2003 season. A 3-0 win there. Two goals from Kieran Dyer and one from Alan Shearer. Uh, we played them the year afterwards as well. I think that was Leeds' last uh, season in the Premier League, 2003-2004. We drew 2-2. Two, two. two goals from Alan Shearer, one penalty. Uh, Ex-Newcastle player who back then would have been a future Newcastle player. In fact, two of them. I forgot about the other one. I was going to say Mark Viduga. But Alan Smith, how could I forget? Alan Smith played for us as well. Yeah, Mark Viduga and Alan Smith scored against the Washira scored two. That was the last time we played them before their relegation for 16 seasons. Uh, so yeah, we're looking for our first win there in the 2002-2003 season. Once we played them in the championship, in which we did beat them at Ellen Road, that was thanks to Dwight Gale's two goals and a 2-0 win. So that was the last win at Ellen Road in all competitions, 16-17. Newcastle's team news there, then we'll jump into that. Fair bit. Um, Long-term absentees, Isaac Hayden, Callum Wilson and Federico Fernandez remain out, unfortunately. Um Matt Ritchie is a bit of a doubt, uh, has, has a bit of a knee injury. Eddie Howe says that he will need assessed. So we've got to keep an eye on that one. Dwight Gale, speaking of, and Jeff Hendrick, who scored there last season, are both back on training. They've been out for a few weeks, uh, but have been came back this week. Kieran Clark is still not back yet. Boo-hoo, what a shame. Uh, he is near a return, though, so should be back uh, next week, maybe in a couple. Javier Manquillo returns to the side after sitting out last week with a suspension after picking up five yellow cards, so he's available again. And to finish off, Eddie Howe addressed Jamal Lewis as we may be in a little bit of a left-back predicament here. We'll get into some Paul Dummett crack a little bit later on. Uh, but Jamal Lewis uh, has not had a lot of training, Eddie Howe says, but he is back and we are pleased with him. So doing well in training despite not having a lot. So is in contention for tomorrow's game with Matt Ritchie being a doubt. Um, so that's about it for the build up to the game. Going to jump into my prediction in a second. Going to have a look what you guys are saying just before we do that. Um, stats always seem terrible regarding Newcastle. Yeah, they do. I, I hate doing them. Coming into doing the match preview. I'll have a little bit of a look, see what the stats say. And I'm like, oh, that's a little bit lifting that. Like, 
Lewis needs to keep up with Rafinha. However, our Russian players back is not always good. So interested to see what how it does. Yep, absolutely. Aaron will we'll get onto that in a minute. Will Richie play? Will it be Dummer? Will it be Lewis? Uh, yeah, going to be interesting. We'll come to that in a sec. I think it's going to be one of them mad games, 3-2 to the tune. I can see that, to be honest. Yeah, we're both fighting here. Both not really in the best form, despite um, Leeds having two wins in the last two games, which is one more than we've won all season in all competitions. So, yeah, their run of two games in a row is better than ours. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. Frank also agrees with John. Two teams with terrible defence and good attackers. There'll be goals. Just hope we get more than them. Yeah, that is how we get three points, by scoring more goals than the others. Um, yeah, th they've got a lot of injuries, like I just said. Um, it was a junior Firpo, Liam Cooper, their out, as well as Calvin Phillips, who's a bit of a rock in front of the defence as well. So, yeah, could be interesting. Without that main striker and backup strikers, uh, now Taylor Roberts is coming back. Sorry, uh, it's Patrick Bamford that's the one out. That is a good option, though, to be fair. Um, he did play there in his final game before uh, suspension, which was against Man United in the Premier League. He played at left back when uh, Kier and Emil Kraft played right back. And we've also got Kieran Trippier, who is known to play left back or wing back as well. So a couple options there. Don't need to play... Richie Lewis or Dummett if we don't need to, if Mankio's available. Mankio played there many, many a time, and so has Trippier as well. So, yeah, interesting, that one. We got to win this, surely, with their injury concerns. They don't have Bamford, which is a big bonus, and Maxi will enjoy against Aylan. Yeah, I can say that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Luke Aylan may not be able to keep up with the pace and trickery of some Maximin. If he's on his day, though, he hasn't really always had the best of days recently, has he? So... Obviously, you have to keep an eye out on Smaxman. What kind of game will he have? Even when he has a bad game, like the one last week at Watford, it wasn't his best performance, but done the magic, got the goal, put a 1-0 up. All he can really do. So, yeah, we'll obviously have to keep an eye out on that one. Shock 4-0 win tomorrow, says Pete. Uh, we get battered, absolutely dreading it. Great optimism there. Thanks very much for that. So we're going to jump into the lineup prediction there then, guys. And we are going to start in goal. Obviously, it's going to be Martin Dubravka. Can't really see much argument there. And Kieran Trippier, obviously one of the first names on the team sheet at the minute. He's not going anywhere, even if Mankio is available. They say could play left back, could play right back. It doesn't really matter. But he was one of the standout players in that Watford game for me. You can just tell his experience and the quality that he brings to the team. Like, it's it's amazing. Like, you, for a right-back, it is a bit mad to think that what right-back probably is now our best player. Uh, if we can do some more of that going forward and turn that into creating some goals and scoring some goals, and that would be brilliant. Um, Centre-back in Jamal Lascelles. Oh, he was the villain against Watford, will he? And rightly so, because he was shite. <laughs> Fucking hell, uh, it rectifies the need. Straight after that Watford game, I tweeted, we need to just get some bodies in. I know we don't want to be taking a ride for. I know we don't want to spend too much money. The owners are going to have to take the, the league seriously and like the transfer window seriously, I should say. They're not give in to extreme demands, but we need it, man. If they want to stay in the league, if they're serious about not getting relegated, they're going to have to cough up some money and sort out that back line. Whether it is Diego Carlos, Benoit Bayashiel, who else we've been linked with, Sven Botman, whoever it is, would need to get some bodies in, man. Like that defense is an absolute shambles. Uh, Fabian Shaw, I'm okay with, had an okay game. And without Fernandez, of course, we've pretty much got to stick with these two. Clark's also out. Someone talking about Dummett being my best centre back. No, he's not. No, he's absolutely not. Um, I don't mind them playing on the left-hand side of like a back five or back three, if you like. So if we've got two wing backs and we're playing three centre backs, stick them on the left-hand side. Quite like Emil Kraft, in my opinion. I think on the right-hand side of a, a back three, that's his best position. And Paul Dummett, for me, that's his one and only decent position, the left-hand side of a back three. Um, he's not a left-back. I don't think he had a good game. I've seen a lot of praise for him on Twitter. I was there. I didn't say that at all. Um, decent in some parts, particularly in the second half. But first half, just 
out of position. Like that's where they had their joy down their right hand side or left hand side. He was just so open, like he just wasn't in position at all, too high up the field or too far in. They were just putting the balls in down that their right hand side. It was just so open, like all he's ever really done, in my opinion, for years and years when he's been playing left back is just hoof it up. Like, he's not quick. He doesn't have great delivery. I, I I don't really know what he offers. Like he's, I've never really seen him play as a centre back in a back four. So just him and a centre back uh, partner. I've never really seen him play like that. I don't imagine he'd be very good. Maybe worth giving him a shot, but nah, obviously, again, rectifies one need to buy some players, left backs as well as centre backs being linked with uh, Robin Gussens from Atlanta. I think he'd be a brilliant signing. German international, done amazing in the Euros. Uh, I think he was left back of the competition, if I remember rightly. Uh, and Matt Target as well. May not see some more game time with the addition of Luca Dean at Aston Villa. So even if that's a loan deal, I'd love Matt Target. Big fan of him. So yeah, need to get some left backs just as much as we need some centre backs. Um, but with here we do have available. I would go Jamal Lewis due to the fact that I'm not Dummett's biggest fan and Richie's an injury doubt. Uh, Eddie Howe did say that he hasn't had many minutes in training, but he has looked good and they are pleased with his progression and the way that he has trained. So that spells to me that he's definitely in contention and could play a part. Put me hand on my heart, I honestly do think Paul Dummett will start. But if I'm going to choose my preferences, it would be Jamal Lewis, despite not having a lot of time in training this week. Uh, midfield will stay the same then with... Not many more options available. Uh, Shelby stays uh, since Eddie Howe's came. He's done all right. Not had the best of games in the last few weeks, I don't think, but still okay. Like Even with a bit of a depleting performance of recent, he's still a better John Joe Shelby than the one that was seen for a couple of years under Steve Bruce. So, uh, yet he remains, and so does Joe Linton, absolute grafter. Um, again, maybe not his best game against Watford, but still put in a shift. Solid in the midfield, decent getting forward, holding up the play. You know how he does. So he remains, as well as Sean Longstaff, who another one I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, another one since Eddie Howe came. He's been a lot better than the Sean Longstaff of the Steve Bruce era, but still not as good as the one from the Rafa Benitez era. Decent game against um, Watford, but still not great, I don't think. think we can definitely still do better. Could do with another midfielder, uh, especially with Isaac Hayden being out. Not sure how long he's still got left to be on the sidelines for. But I think as soon as we get Richie in playing in this for, uh, sorry, Isaac Hayden coming in in this formation, we'll be a lot better off. Nobody's particularly interested in seeing Jeff Hendrick come in and free Matty, do a free Matty or release Matty or loan Matty or what we're going to do with Matty. Doesn't really seem to be in the plans at all. Thought he would have been on the bench last week even if he was unused, but no, nah, he wasn't. So I don't know what the future of uh, Matty Longstaff holds. And the front three will be Big Chris Wood up top with the same out, uh, outfield players. So the only change from the Watford game in there for me is Lewis for Dummett, uh, which is why I'm starting to think Dummett probably will play. I mean, we haven't had that many players come back from injury, non-important ones really. Only Gale and Hendrick who aren't starting 11. Mankio could play, as someone did point out. Mankio or Trippier could play on the left-hand side. That is an option, a very, very viable option. I think Mankio had a brilliant game against Man United at left-back. So that is something to look out for. Uh, but big Chris Wood, bit of criticisms from him from his debut. Maybe he didn't get stuck in enough, but did we really supply enough for him? Like, he's not a technically great footballer. I mean, he's decent, but he's just an aerial threat. That's what worked with Burnley for so many years. Just shithouse football, pumping it long. Big, strong lad, physical player. Aerial threat is his strength, and I don't really think we've played to that too much. We need a bit better delivery. Trippier's got that ability. So has Shelby. That's why I think Richie or Lewis offer a hell of a lot more than what Dummett do on the left-hand side. Like He just hasn't really got very good delivery. So, yeah, we could play to Chris Wood's strengths a little bit more. 
I think Fraser had a pretty good game, but he did fatigue a bit towards the end. Did look a little bit knackered, so the change for him for Almiron was a, a welcome one, in my opinion. But yeah, good first half. Uh, I am a really big fan of Ryan Fraser. It's taken a long time to get his feet under the table, really. I think the addition of Eddie Howe worked very well for him and his career here. Uh, last season under Steve Bruce, it was just injury problems, really. Just couldn't really hit the ground running, couldn't stay fit long enough, couldn't really find form. But yeah, I think he's doing really, really well. Just needs to work on fitness, maybe. Doesn't seem like he can last 90 minutes. He looks knackered in the final third. So yeah, Ryan Fraser can keep his position for me. Jacob Murphy, I'm a fan of, could bring him in. I thought he had a brilliant game against Cambridge, although it is Cambridge. And Maxi, being in the crowd at St. James's Park last Saturday, a lot of calls for him to be taken off, to be sold, to be just whatever. Drop him in the middle of Sunderland Town Centre, see what happens. But he can just bring the moments of magic. Like, he is very frustrating. Like, I think we just rely on him too much. I think he's almost too good for us in the sense that when he's good, he's outstanding. And he has been a key player for us for the last two and a half seasons so we'll just rely on him for a bit of creativity now for goals and assists as well. And he can't get a bit greedy. I know what people are saying that like he does just try and do a bit too much, he tries to do the fancy thing when he could just do the simple thing, he tries to take people on, gets caught in possession. And sometimes it's cost us. Like we'll have conceded goals where he's been a little bit sloppy in the middle of the park. So yeah, just very, very frustrating at times. But he can bring the magic. He got us that goal, put work on the front foot against Watford. He can deliver that magic when he's on form. Did it against Leeds at St. James's Park. Did it against Man United. I think he's got five goals so far this season. He's he's personal best in the Premier League already and we're only halfway through. Uh, three assists as well. So eight goal contributions. So already having his best season in a black and white shirt. So we'll see what happens with uh, Sir Maximin. But guaranteed, obviously, with a few injuries, he will start. Guaranteed. Uh, this is my bench. Got Carl Darlow, uh, no need for two goalkeepers as there was last week, if we, as we've got a couple more bodies back available. Uh, Mankio is available after suspension, as mentioned. Kieran, uh, Emil Kraft, Paul Dummett. Maybe Matt Ritchie won't be fit enough, so maybe replace him with Jeff Hendrick, maybe, or Elliot Anderson. We'll see who's available, who's not yet. I'd probably say it will be Jeff Hendrick the more experienced of the two, uh, with Jacob Murphy, Joe Willock, Miguel Almiron, and bring Dwight Gale back into the side because he can't score against teams like Leeds. Done it in time and time again in the championship. Uh, and we do need another striking option if something happens to Chris Wood. Uh, it would be nice to have somebody else, like a, a more natural striker than trying to rotate the team and put Maxi up top or someone out of position like Joe Linton. So... Yeah, that's my team there. Then let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what your team would be as well as a score prediction. Going to come back and see what you guys are saying. Um, where did I leave off? It was around about here. Play the kids. Can't motivate greedy millionaires. Uh, get what you're saying. Half agree with you. Half disagree with you. Um, it would be interesting because I think the kids like the likes of Joe White and um, Elliot Anderson, especially like the Geordie lads, the lad that grew up watching the club. Can it be any worse? Like they want to play for the team. They want to fight for their future. They want to be first team players. They've only got themselves to prove it. Like if they get an opportunity, they need to take, take it with two hands. So it could work out, but with the inexperience, just still young lads, lack of experience, in a big situation like a relegation battle, you would fancy the more experienced players to get you out of it. So, I don't know. It's it's a bit of a tough one, that one. Uh, but I, I get I get what you're saying. If we survive, we will get more players in. Definitely for summer. People forget the table resets. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's all it takes. Like, we need to survive, even if we would just scrape 17th. For me, it's better than going to the championship. I know a lot of people have said, like, it's okay if we go to the championship. On, again, on one hand, I get where you're coming from, but not for me. I don't want to get relegated because it does set me back a bit. If we go to the championship, we're signed championship players. It's just the same as what we did with Rafa, and most of them are still here. Gail, Clark, Richie, players like that. It's pretty much the same team. 
Darlow, Shelby was there, Cells was there. It just hasn't improved at all, really, in the year since we went down to the championship. So I don't want to do that because I don't want to start shopping for championship players. I want Premier League players. I want top quality players like the likes of Sven Botman and other players, maybe the Ekatike, people like that. Like Jesse Lingard won't want to play in the championship. None of them will really. Will Sir Maximin? Will Wilson stay? Yeah. Once we survive, that's basically where this regime starts for me. Right now, it's just to survive. We're basically still in Mike Ashley territory, just trying to scrape 17th every season. That's basically where we're still at. We can't get ourselves out of that right now. So, yeah, this, the new regime starts when we survive. It, like you say, Andrew, it's a clean slate. We can get Premier League players. We'll, we can attract them because there's no relegation battle. Like People don't want to come right now because there is that fear of relegation. No one really wants that on their CV. So if we do survive, scrape it on goal difference. I don't think players will matter. Like the likes of Diego Carlos and Sven Botman have been pushing to come to Newcastle. Here in Trippier, pushed to come to Newcastle when all of them are playing European football. So that's the attraction that we can bring. If it's if it's the championship, it's a different ball game. Premier League, get anyone. Lingard might want to come on a permanent deal because you'll know what the future goal is. And other players like him, like I don't know, like a Martial, for example, or Bamiang, they'll want to come because they'll know that we can push on. We can buy some quality players and push on to be become the team that we we'll want to be and leave the Mike Ashley era in the past. So that's what we can do in the summer. Right now, we are just still playing catch-up from the Mike Ashley era. 17th will do. We just need to survive. Going down to the championship, settle back a couple of years, I think. Like, I don't want to do that at all. Hmm. That's an interesting stat. I've never seen that one, although we don't win many games. I don't know if you can put that down to Ryan Fraser. We've only won one game this season, so you could say that about anyone else, really. Uh, and last season, he didn't play many games due to injury, so I wouldn't really worry about that stat too much, uh, although it is a very interesting one. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I didn't know that. These lot don't want to stay up. They want to keep job, so more chance. Mm. Ever notice Leeds keep a mess, Lier. Is heavily one-footed and spills passes from the back all the time when pressed on his worst foot. I haven't noticed that, no. Yeah, I mean, get yourself on the sidelines. Tell Eddie that. Tell them to close them down and pressure the goalkeeper. Don't want to see Lascelles anywhere near that starting lineup. Nope, me either. Not in the absolute slightest. Not a hope in hell's chance. But he will be as he's the captain. It's been the same, same shites for the last couple of years. Put the armband on him, straighten the team. Uh, can't honestly say anything but a home win. I think you guys will struggle to keep up the pace 2-0. Fair enough. Good evaluation. Uh, I'd rather have Dummett. Mm, yeah, did mention that before. Has anyone ever actually seen Dummett playing a flat back for at centre-back? I can't say that. I recall it. Do like Dummett in a back three. Class there, but that's all. Yeah, agreed, John. That's what I said before. Dummett's slow, not attacking-minded. Yep. We need to take this game seriously as this game is our derby. We hang in by a thread and if we lose tomorrow, that snaps up threads. Yeah, good evaluation, Callum. Yeah, agree with that. Uh, let's say before at the start of the video, Leeds are only four places in the league ahead of us, 10 points. So they can be suckered into the relegation battle. It is another team like a Watford, like a Norwich, like a Burnley. Teams that are around us, we need to get points off. We can't afford to let them win in create a bigger gap come the end of that game three points to Leeds that's a 13 point gap that's massive that like so um yeah kind of thought to lose that just looking at that can't fastest in the squad is he is he really Robin Gossens is quality but he's injured at the minute is why I think they're looking at other targets if not for his injury he was probably first on the list yeah I've seen a few things like that about injuries like Baddy Ashiel and uh couple of the others can't remember who else it was but yeah like a couple of our targets have been injured and as much as we want them in as soon as possible ready for the next game they're not long-term injuries like we're only halfway through the season there's a lot of football still to be played so if there's a target that's gonna massively improve us in the second third of the season then so i'm not bothered about them picking up a 
two, three, four week injury. We've got international breaks coming up. We've got FA Cup weekends and things like that. Like plenty of time for them to recover during that time. So I'm not bothered about a little niggly injury just because he can't play next week. Does that mean that we shouldn't sign him? He can still play 20 games. Uh, well, maybe it's not 20, but you know what I mean? Like still plenty of football to be played just because he, he's going to miss one or two games. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't sign a quality player. So yeah, I, I still say get him in, mate. Uh, cheers, mate. I'm all right, you know. Decent fullback. Used to be a striker back in the day, but in my last season, he went the fullback. Changed my mind. Should have been playing there all along. I could have been playing. I could have been the next Paul Dummett if I started off as a kid playing left back because I'm fucking mid. Uh, centre back, though, probably not. Definitely not strong enough for that. Coming up against Chris Wood, I'd probably cry and ask for it to be subbed off. <laughs> but maybe he could do a better job than the cells because he's shite. Willock maybe get a start over long staff. Maybe. Uh, Willock hasn't really shown anything this season to prove that. Like, as much as I'm not Longstaff's biggest fan, out with the two of them, I'd probably say that I've seen more from Longstaff. So, yeah, I'd, I'd probably stick with Longstaff. He's probably a bit more match fit, played a lot more game time recently. So, I don't know. Six and two threes, really. Keep hearing Paul Dummett is quick. I think there was something written in an article once he'd done a sprint that time was amazing, but I've never seen the guy on the pitch too more than jogging speed. Thanks, Frank. Please, it's not just me. Yeah, I don't know. Like, he might be good in a 40 meter dash, but on the ball, chasing back defenders, especially when he gives them about 40 yard head start when he's miles out of position, nah, he hasn't got that pace that we need, I don't think. We need experience against Rafinha, Dummett or Manquio at left back, and then if Rafinha starts to tie, I bring Lewis on for the pace. Good tactics that Callum. I like that. Well done. Personally, I'd love to see that back four, John Joe and Joe in front of them. Fraser, Miggy and Maxi in behind Wood. I'd like that to be fair. Yeah, a bit of a, a 4 2 3 1. That is my favorite formation. It's what I would like to see. But for some reason, we've never really done it. I don't know if it suits Eddie Howe's style of play. Certainly didn't suit Rafa's, like that. Uh, Steve Bruce's. That's what we should have been doing for Donkeys under Steve Bruce. But for some reason, never did. Uh, start either of the long staffs, it's definitely a loss. Awful players, Willock has been bad, but should be an over him. All right, fair enough. And then, yeah, long staff's been dreadful. Hi, guys, can't wait for tomorrow. I would take a draw. I would too, Brian. Don't want to draw. I don't think we're in any position to start accepting draws, but it is better than nothing. It's certainly better than a defeat, so it might be a decent result. I'm going to go for my score prediction now while it's in and go 1-1 one, one, as I put in the start on my who knows wins uh, bet 10. I've gone for a 1-1. One, one. So, yeah, that is my score prediction. Although, if we can shit house our way to a 2-1 or a scrappy 1-0, Chris Wood last minute, he'd bosh back, back stick. I'd absolutely love it. Uh, wouldn't be against dropping Maxi and bringing him in second half and playing Miggy, who will track back and deal with Rafinha. Maxi doesn't really do that. That's a good point as well, Aaron. Yeah, Maxi doesn't track back and Miggy does. Uh, stronger than he looks, Miggy is good at tracking back and sticking a foot in, trying to win back possession. Um, would you rather put him in over Fraser, though? I think that might make a bit more sense, although, again, Fraser is a bit more defensive-minded as well. I think anyone's more defensive-minded than Maxi, to be fair. So, yeah, I agree with what you're saying there. No creativity without ASM yet. Yeah, agreed. Just needs to learn to pass. Tomorrow is LaSalle's last chance for me. I mean, I would agree, but who's he proven? The, the rumours are that uh, Sevilla could be open to selling Diego Carlos after this weekend as they've got a two-week break in La Liga, uh, which would come to the end of the transfer window. So a deal could be done after this weekend. Hopefully it is. Obviously, the deadline's passed now. We can't get anyone in at the moment, so it doesn't really matter anyway. So after the Leeds game, I say, it, well, it doesn't really matter about the Leeds game. It's after Sevilla's game. After that Sevilla game, go get Diego Carlos. We need him. Um, can we not bring back Ben Arthur? He's just signed for Lille. Yeah, he's just signed for Lille on a free. People rant and rave about Maxi Ben Arthur over him for me. Back in his day, I would agree. Uh, in the primes, Ben Arthur over Maxi every day of the week. Um, he's getting on a bit there, though, but just signed for Lille, who are doing well. Uh, going to join Botman. So, yeah, even at his age, would he still bring him back? I'd have a pop on him. I'd like to see what he's like. I don't know. Um, interesting, but yeah, he's, he's not a free agent anymore. Don't know what how he's in Longstaff. 
I don't think we'll start dumb again. But other than that, you're probably spot on with the selection. Yeah, I, I think that as well. I'm just a little bit more optimistic about seeing Lewis. I would prefer to see Lewis, but put my hand on my heart. I do think we'll play the same team that started Watford, which does include uh, Dummett over Lewis. Maxi is as frustrated as us. The players on the park are just not good enough. Yes, yeah, he probably feels like he does have to do it all because the rest are shite. So, yeah, that is a good point. Like He is our technically best player. So it probably feels like he needs to put in more work when really he has to rely on his teammates a little bit more, trust them a little bit more, pass the ball more, instead of just trying to do it all by himself. Because when he gets caught in possession, it's dangerous because he doesn't track back. So we're all automatically on the back front. Uh, will you consider the prospect of playing Gale and Wood up front together for this game? Um... <sighs> No, because it takes someone else out of the starting eleven who I prefer more than Gale. But with the formation, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, I think Chris Wood would probably play better with a partner. Uh, he usually does. The little and large combo I quite like. I think it does well if we use Wood as like the target man, like the hoof up long to him, bring it down, play in Gale. Could work a treat. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't mind saying it, but I don't know. I just feel like we've got better options than Dwight Gale. Uh, so, yeah, doing that would take someone else out. Although you could take Longstaff out, though, to be fair. I wouldn't really mind saying that. Kind of like a 4-4-2. Proper Burnley tactics, that shithouse 4-4-2. Mike Bassett. Uh, Fraser and Maxi on the wings. Shelby Joey in the middle. Wood and Gale up front. Maybe. I don't know. Let me know. People, what would you like to say? Would that interest you? Uh, it's Miggy's last chance. He needs to play. He needs to start performing. I'll get him out. Score prediction, 1-1. One, one. Uh, all right, that will do me. Thank you very much for your interaction this evening, guys. Appreciate it as always. Um, yeah, let me know what your score prediction is in the comments below, as well as your lineup prediction. Do you agree with mine? What would you change? Um, and yeah, don't forget to download the Who Knows Wins app in the description below and come back for some match day content uh, tomorrow evening. Um, Big Renty will be on the Don Robbie show, so if go follow that on YouTube, DR Sports, a uh, bit of a Sky Sports news like panel uh, with Saeed and a couple others on from the football and world covering the games across the weekend. So go see Big Renty do that. Uh, there'll not be a watch along. I've got a bit of stuff to do tomorrow. A bit of a busy bee these days. Only really get to do these videos once a week at the minute. So thank you very much for everyone watching. Appreciate your patience and appreciate the support, all the comments that I get. Uh, follow the socials as well in the bottom corner at KegTNC on Twitter and Instagram. Appreciate the support as well as the Magpie channel, of course. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy yourself.